Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Just over here at the Rep Karen, but we are about to look at some baby snakes that I'm pretty super excited about because well, I'm always excited about a bunch of baby snakes, but every now and then we had something that is rare, not too many people produce, and it's really cool. And you guys might remember when I pulled this clutch of eggs, uh, I won't ruin the surprise for you, but let's go ahead and see these little babies because they are absolutely adorable. I am so excited about this. You may remember when I actually got this clutch of eggs. It was a Sabu Python, and I had thought that she was gonna lay like four or five eggs, because she produced ones for us in the past. It was a few years ago, and uh, she ended up laying a whole bunch of eggs. She laid 12 eggs, and guess what, guys? They are hatching, and like I had mentioned, the adult female has kind of that gray color. They have a silver eyes, and they actually start out kind of this orangey, almost reddish color, and then they go through what they call an octogenic color change, which just basically means they get to an adult color of gray, but as babies, they actually hatch out these beautiful color here. And again, you don't see too many captive born Sabu pythons. It's a pretty rare thing. So it is amazing that we hatch these guys out. I'm so excited. And look at this little monkey right here. It's actually got its head out of the egg. It's not in there. There's still one in the egg here and then the rest of them are all hatched out. I tell you, what, these are so amazing. You know, they get maybe three, three and a half foot long. They're a lot like a Maclats python. It's from the same area, Indonesia, but the Maclats can get eight, nine foot. These guys stay at three, three and a half, maybe four foot. So they're almost like a dwarf Maclots python. I am obsessed with these guys right now. When that first head popped out yesterday, I was like, oh my God. And then this morning woke up and they were all out. I was so excited. What an amazing, amazing batch of babies that we have here. Again, it's great getting snake eggs. I love getting snake eggs, but when they hatch, Holy cow, and these guys are crazy. Like I said, I thought in the best case, we're gonna produce four or five of these guys, and we got 12 little babies. Now the hard question is, am I gonna keep them all? That's uh, up to you guys to decide, I think. Go ahead in the comments, tell me if you think I'm gonna keep them, because uh, I'm gonna give you a little hint. Uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna keep them. So regardless, absolutely amazing. We've had this big debate going with our African giant millipede, like what should we name it? We've thought of Twizzler, Licorice, Tootsie or legs a lot. So go down in the comments and let me know what you guys think. Again, Twizzler, Licorice, Tootsie or legs a lot. What do you think would be a good name for this guy? Cause he is so absolutely incredible. Love this little thing, but he does need a really good name. What time is it? It's not Kalupa egg time. <laughs> and we actually have the last possible clutch that we could produce the Barney Ball Python. This is actually a very unique chocolate pinstripe. Just different than the other chocolate pinstripes because it has these wide bands. And I've always said there's probably something else genetically going on with it. But nevertheless, whoa, mom, whoa, come on, mom, that's okay. We're gonna just gently get her off her eggs right here. Come on, mama. You're okay. Kind of bite me. Got a couple wonky eggs right here. This egg is kind of weird. I'm not sure what's going on with this. I'm gonna send it and we'll have to candle that one. Looks like we've got four good eggs right here too. But then it looks like we've got some sluggers, which is a little bit of a disappointment for sure. We'll have to get that cage all cleaned up, get her kind of all set up. One day I'm gonna actually show you the process we do when we get past that, how we actually clean the animals, clean the cage, do all that type of stuff. We'll do that at some point. But listen, we've got two, four, five good eggs and it looks like two, four, five slugs, 50%. That's not the way we want to end that year with the particular project, but hey, we've got a lot of eggs for the potential Barney Ball Python, so we'll see what happens, and I love this girl. And five eggs, hey, that's still good enough. Again, she was bred to a banana chocolate spinner, so there could be all those super chocolates, and of course, super chocolate bananas and super chocolate banana spinners, which should be that solid purple animal, but we'll see what happens. And although it's maybe not the best fertility, I'll take five good eggs any day. And what we have here is actually a chocolate female. Looks like, oops, she's got some eggs all over the place, but it looks like she's got a good clutch of eggs. And she was bred to this banana fire spinner blast. So it's a banana, it's a pastel, it's a spider, it's a pinstripe, and it's a fire. And we're gonna see how many eggs this girl actually has. Obviously, we'll take these eggs that are out of the clutch themselves, and we're gonna have to candle these guys just like we always do. It looks like that one that might actually be attached. So we'll just gently get mama off her eggs, and wow, what a clutch, huh? Ooh. 
Tell you what, not bad. This egg is unattached as well, but then it looks like the other eggs actually are all together, so I should be able to kind of remove them. Just pull these two eggs out here. Ooh, and Mama, whoa, come on, Mama. It's all right, it's a whoa, she's fired up. Gotta be careful for sure. Whoa, come on, Mama. Get these eggs out of here without Mama getting too upset at us. Got three more eggs to get out. Ooh, doggy, I tell you what. Oh, she's coming back at me. She's coming back at me. Whoa, jeez. And we'll get these eggs in here. I tell you what, this is a lot bigger clutch than I expected. That's two, four, six, eight, ten beautiful eggs. Again, that's chocolates, that's bananas, all kinds of combination stuff. Should be really, really cool. Today, I, um, I get the wonderful yet also daunting task of training our beautiful melanistic alligator pepper so um as many of you guys know she has a little bit of an aggressive side to her but it, me personally i kind of like it anytime like we ever talk about alligators or anything like that these guys are not pets we're not trying to show you guys that how to keep a an alligator in your house or in your bathroom or anything like that because that's not what we're about around here everything that i'm about to show you guys is simply just uh, just showing you our process and how we handle a certain issue issue animal like this and on top of all of that Every little bit of things that I'm doing, I'm not a professional. The Gator Land, those guys are got this to a T and to a so much better level than I am. So I'm still learning a lot. But that being said, let's get started. Let me show you guys what I'm sort of doing. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I am trying to do a station, a station with her, but it's been a little difficult with her trying to get up on the ledge. So there's no guarantee she's actually gonna do exactly what I want her to, but I still wanna encourage her to, to, to basically get in that direction. So if I can get her to play stuff, that'll be ultimately what I want her to do. So I'm gonna really treat her hard for that. If she doesn't, so be it. We'll still we'll still keep working at it and we'll still keep pushing for it. But let's get started, right? Holy cow, I didn't did not expect that at all. I'm pretty excited that she's she's coming along so quickly. So that's that's all pepper guys. Like like as much as I'd like to take a lot of credit for that, I gotta give that one all the pepper. She was she decided today this was the day to, to work real hard for her food and really and really like perform well. So this so this is definitely the start to a really, really cool relationship that we're gonna start building further with Pepper. And we're gonna take you along with it. It's gonna be so much fun. Oh my god, it's gonna be so great, man. Remember earlier I had said that I'll probably keep all of the little baby taboos. Well the truth is I am at least gonna keep this little female right here. Again, I might keep the whole clutch, but I want to kind of document the color change and size and stuff like that. So I need a little name for this little girl right here. And then over the next, you know, year, we'll actually document how big she's grown, how she's changing. At what time does she change from this kind of orangey kind of look to a silvery gray look? I think it'll be really cool, but first off, we need a name. So go down in the comments and tell me what you think this little monkey should be called. Guess what time it is, people? Bluebird egg time. And this, of course, is a black motley corn snake. I love this. I remember when this girl laid the first clutch. It was a beautiful clutch. I just It's one of my favorite corn snakes right here. And oh my gosh, another great second clutch clutch. Like I had mentioned, Lori's been working super hard because it's not that easy to get this kind of fertility in so many second clutches. It means that you are just really, really working hard at it and I couldn't be more happy with the way she's done. And that is again a beautiful clutch. The first clutch was 18 eggs. This clutch certainly looks like it's going to be a decent sized clutch. Definitely not 18, but 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14 good eggs. So 14 good eggs, 18 the first time. I mean, that's amazing for a corn snake. And again, because these eggs are relatively big, we know the babies are gonna hatch out sizable as well. So that's gonna be amazing. So I think we have one more clutch to pull. And then this girl is actually an apricot Pueblin milk snake. Again, a second clutch. We'll see what's going on with this girl right here. Oh, this looks like a mixed bag. This is more typical of a normal second clutch. So all those nice things I said about Lori, uh, I take them all back. 
No, no, that's not true. The truth is, is that uh, that's how colubrid breeding season actually goes down, is typically you have uh, uh, just a lot less fertility in the second clutch. And the fact that we've had such great fertility, again, means a lot of hard work. But we've got three good eggs here, three little slugs for this apricot club, and we'll get her all cleaned up and get all ready to go. Again, once they lay their second clutches, they are done for the year, ready for brumation. So uh, it's good that these animals get a little bit of a break from breeding now for the next two, three months, get beefed up looking good, and then we'll cool them off and get ready for next year. We've been open for five weeks now here at the Reptarium, and I gotta be honest with you, the animals have really reverted right back to their old self, being kind of those amazing animal ambassadors that they've always been, you know, like Night Fury here. I'll be honest with you, it was so food aggressive when we first opened up that it was a little scary. Of course, we know that we've been ball training him and stuff like that, but it's just cool that he's coming out and being his normal self, and all the animals, even Nova, who was really kind of in the back of the cage, chilling out and stuff like that, he's coming down and seeing people now. Perdita, of course, is all the way up front like she always is. She's always just chilling out, wanting to get some more attention and stuff like that. So it's really cool to see how quickly even animals like Bella have reverted back to the old way. Uh, again, I was a little worried about it. You know, even Salt, you know, we had a little bit of a training issue with her when we first reopened. Now she is bulletproof and doing so amazing. So it's amazing how quickly the animals have adapted. Clubert season is continuing to go and we've got a couple more clutches of hatchlings. And this is the first corn snakes of the year. And I tell you, these are absolutely incredible. They may just look like snow corn snakes here, and that's what these are, which is basically lacking the red pigment and the black pigment. Now, interestingly enough, there's some black corns in here as well that would be lacking just the red pigment. So essentially, this snake here is the exact snake as this if you just took away the black pigment and got like this. But these aren't just normal snow corns. They're actually coral snow corns, and these are black corals. And oh, these babies start to get going. You guys may remember from last year, as soon as they get going, it's like a can of worms. So I'm gonna do the best I can do. Look at this little monkey right here. Come on guys, you stay in here. So the coral snow is actually a polygenically bred animal so that the animals are extremely pink. And this is what they look like when they get bigger. I mean, just this beautiful pink color. And again, it's a polygenically bred trait, which just basically means that we breed the pinkest animals to the pinkest animals each year. And every generation you get more and more pink. Whew, tell it, that's a river. So they hatch out relatively normal. And look at this little head right here poking out. There's still just a couple eggs left to hatch. There's a black corn snake right here. Look at how cute that is. Oh, and another snow corn. They're flickering their tongues and stuff like that. They're getting their first breaths of air. That is amazing. But within about six months, they start to get more and more pink. And by the time they're a year old, they're brilliantly colored. So these guys are so absolutely incredible. I mean, you saw the adult. It is ridiculous. So it is so cool. The first corn snakes of the year have hatched. Uh, just a few more to come out here, and then we'll get these guys set up. It usually takes about a week for them to shed out and then they start eating slowly thereafter we usually feed two three four meals before we even think about selling them so here yeah, about a month or so you'll see these guys on the website but we do have one other clutch hatch as well then the second clutch that's hatching out is just like one of the first clutches that hatches which are these little feisty brooks king snakes but these are aneurythristic brooks king snakes so we already had one aneurythristic brooks king clutch hatch this is the second one and i had mentioned before how they actually hatch a little bit early right they hatch at about 50 52 days the corn snakes actually go 60 days so I think this was clutch like number seven to be honest with you but it's hatching obviously in advance of the other clutches because it doesn't take as much incubation time so that's pretty awesome these guys are absolutely incredible and they're feisty little monkeys as a baby there's no doubt about that but they tame out good colubrid snakes you know six seven foot beefy animal super docile animals really aggressive feeder so it's pretty cool to have our second clutch of annery brooks on the ground and these guys get eating pretty quick I mean usually within a week they're eating and ready to go so uh, that's pretty awesome Awesome. We've got so many baby snakes coming. It is exciting to finally start hatching. Trust me, guys, buckle up. It's going to be a ridiculous couple months ahead of us. Baby Sabu pythons. How absolutely incredible is that? Like I mentioned, I'm going to definitely keep that one neat and name for it down in the comments. Uh, chances are I might keep the whole clutch. I don't know yet. I'm just excited to have them. I, I could see having a big group because they're so absolutely incredible. If you enjoyed this video, here's a playlist of a baby snakes hatching like crazy. Uh, you can roll through that if you so choose. Up here, can you do me a favor and subscribe? my podcast channel it's called checking in we do checking in every wednesday noah's choices on friday on this side you can subscribe to this vlog channel turn your post notifications on please have a wonderful day remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you tomorrow